So I've been thinking a lot about this idea of just-in-time software and how AI can enable it. And what does that actually mean? So imagine you have software or a web page and it's not actually pre-rendered. There's no code repository. As soon as you click something, the software is built and delivered to you in that moment based on the context of what you need. And I truly think that that is going to be the future of software. Large language models are going to write exactly the software you need in that moment and not before. And today I have a really cool project to show you that kind of highlights what's possible. It dynamically creates web pages as you click on them. And it's much more than that. And it's a brand new project. It's kind of undiscovered. So I'm going to show it to you and I'm going to show you how to install it and get it running on your machine. And the good thing is you can get it actually running completely locally. But today we're going to be using Claude. Let me give you a demo real quick. So this is called TL Browse and it is by Sawyer Hood, and I'll drop all the links in the description below. But the gist is it's an infinite web canvas, as it says right here, and all the websites that you generate just based on the URL are AI generated. So you can obviously scroll all the way out, you can scroll up and down. So if you've ever used an infinite canvas app, this should feel very familiar. But here's where it gets really crazy. I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna type bestbuy.com. And now it's going to generate the bestbuy.com website on the fly. So here's a page. Obviously it's not the actual bestbuy.com website, but deals, electronics, appliances, smart home services. So let's click into one of them, shop smartphones. I'll click on it and now another page gets created bestbuy.com slash smartphones. And now that's getting generated. How amazing is this? So it allows you to create web pages on the fly. You can download them. Obviously you can edit them and you can publish it yourself as well. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna click into the iPhone 13 Pro, double click on it then single click, and now it's gonna generate that page for me. So pretty basic web pages, but it works incredibly well. It generates very nice code. You can come up here, you can download the code by clicking this button. You can replay the, you can always refresh the page and generate a new version of it, or you can simply play it. And it has a bunch of editing tools, which you can see right here. So I can easily just go ahead and change this make it anything I want. And yeah, it's just like an infinite canvas. Very cool. And from here we can double click, single click, and now it gives me a different page from this main page. So just like that, let's try one more time, double click, single click, and now it's generating this page, TV's home theater. Look at that. So although this is not necessarily why this project was built, it actually kind of hints at this future of just-in-time software, which again, I've been thinking a lot about. And if you have thoughts and ideas about it, drop it in the comments below. I can't wait to explore this idea more. All right, so here's the GitHub repo. It only has 64 stars, so it is brand new. And it's by Sawyer Hood, as I mentioned, it's called TL Browse. So let me show you how to install it now. It's not clear based on the instructions. And hopefully Sawyer updates the instructions to make this easier if this project ends up blowing up. So what we're gonna need are two things. We're gonna need an Anthropic account and you can definitely do it with OpenAI. You can run models locally as well, but today I'm gonna be using Anthropic. So if you wanna follow along, get an Anthropic account. And then we're also gonna need a Clerk account. And Clerk is for authentication, although I didn't really see any authentication. So you could probably just remove that code if you don't wanna play with that. But just to make the install easier and you wanna follow along, get a Clerk account, it's free. So what we're gonna do is come to this green code button, click it. Click the copy button right here, which copies the GitHub URL. Open up Visual Studio Code. We're gonna click this button at the top right to toggle the panel and open up Terminal for ourselves. We're gonna CD to the desktop. Now we're gonna git clone and then paste the GitHub URL right there. Once we've done that, we can CD into TL Browse. Then you're gonna click the Explore button and open folder. Go to the folder that was just created and click open. Now on the right side, this is all the code that's for this project. We're gonna right click and click new file. Then we're gonna type .env.local and then hit enter. And so we're gonna put our environment variable in here. Then you're gonna come to the Anthropic website, console.anthropic.com slash settings slash keys. We're gonna create a new key, just like so. And I'm gonna type YT, I'm gonna click create key. We're gonna copy it, switch back to Visual Studio Code and paste it in right there, surrounded by quotes. 
and then we're going to save. Okay, so now we have the Anthropic API key saved. Now we do have to make a little bit of changes because it wasn't quite clear how to get the Clerk API keys installed properly. But first, let's get it installed. So again, we're going to click to open the terminal. There it is. Then we're going to do bun install to install everything we need for bun. And there it installs all of the packages we need. And then before running bun dev, which we'll get to in a moment, we need to make sure that we have Clerk installed. So go sign up for a Clerk account. It's very simple. It is free. Come down here, create a new app in Clerk. Then we're going to grab the publishable key by double clicking right there. And we're going to paste it into the publishable key. Then where the secret key is, and you're going to hit the view button here. You're going to copy it, switch back and paste it in and save it. Okay. Now we have to put it one more place and I'm not sure if we have to do both, but I couldn't get it to work without doing it. Next in the layout.tsx file, you're going to look for this clerk provider object right there. And we're going to hit space and we're also going to paste our publishable key in there like so save it. Okay, now it should be good to go. So what we're going to do is come back down to the console and write bun dev and then hit enter. And this will spin up the Next.js server for us. And we're going to go to localhost 3000 as soon as it loads up. All right, so now it's ready. We're going to hold down command and click this local host button and it should load up. The first time you load up a Next.js app, it's a bit slow, but every time after that, it loads really quickly. And there we go. So actually it loaded up the previous version, so it has it stored in memory somewhere, but you should be greeted with kind of a blank page. Page. And now you can play around with it. It works and it's pretty darn impressive. So now let's say you want to use a local model or you want to use OpenAI. Let me just quickly show you how to do that. To change the model to, let's say, GPT 4.0, here's what we're going to do. In route.ts, we're going to replace the Claude model with GPT 4.0. And of course, you can use any OpenAI model. And then right here, where it says process.env, you're going to replace the Claude key with OpenAI API key. Now, in .env.local, you definitely want to add the OpenAI API key right there. And actually, that was all I needed to do. And looking at the supported models, they have OpenAI, Anthropic, Grok, which is phenomenally fast, Mistral, and you can probably figure out how to get a local model working pretty easily here. So if you go to client.ts and you simply replace the OpenAI URL here with the Olama local URL, I think it might just work. So give that a try. Let me know if it works. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.